Hi everyone, this is Alejandro Cremades, and today we're going to be talking about the pitch stick outline. So before we get started, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and this way you will never miss out on any of the videos that we roll out every week. So if you're looking to raise money, you're going to need very powerful slides. You're going to need to really capture the essence of your story in some slides so that you can really captivate the attention and the excitement from those investors that you're looking to target. So in today's video, we're really going to be breaking it down to you, how you're packaging it, how you're positioning it, and how to really make it happen when you're putting your story in front of investors. So with that being said, let's get into it. The cover slide. So the cover slide is more than just putting your logo or putting your contact information at the front and center. That's what most founders do. You need to understand that the cover slide is essentially like what the movies are. Like before going to the movies, you've watched a trailer, so maybe your significant other got familiar with what the movie was about, and then you go to the movies because you're playing it safe. It's basically the same thing with the cover slide. It's essentially establishing and setting up the expectations so that the investor gets an idea of what they're about to review. Because remember that on average, investors spend two minutes and 41 seconds per presentation. So here, what you want to do is just right away, set the expectations for what they're about to review, and then they can continue going, but they know what they're about to encounter. So again, the cover slide is like the trailer and the way that you want to position it is by putting very powerful visuals that essentially right away, just by looking at it, the investor is going to get an understanding of what you're doing with your business. You can combine that with a logo, with a nice tagline, for example, a tagline like Uber's everyone private driver, everyone's private driver. It's a really great tagline. So something that you can play with. Uh, but again, you would put your contact info and then really putting that so that they get the idea of what you're doing. Then you would go into the problem slide. The problem slide is essentially what you're tackling. So think about a world where your company doesn't exist. Think about that day where you really started incubating that frustration because there was a gap that you saw in the market and you were thinking about something that you could do about it. But again, it's all about the problem. And the problem is always one. It's not going to be two. It's not going to be three. It's always one problem that you encounter. And it needs to be a problem that perhaps the investor can relate to. So it needs to be something that they either experience themselves or maybe a family member, but it needs to be something that they can relate to. Here, what you want to do is maybe you want to put a problem statement combined with a really powerful visual, maybe show it, showcasing that problem, the frustration that is causing that problem so that they can really capture what you're trying to tackle. Then is the solution slide. On the solution slide is what you're bringing to market. I mean, what you're doing with your business, how you're covering that problem that you identified. And it needs to really come across with a really nice solution statement. It could be a variation of the visual that you're using on the cover, but something that right away they really get and understand on, on, the, on, on one hand, you know, like what is that problem that you're looking to cover, which is the previous slide, but now with the solutions slide, how you're essentially covering that problem. So that's in essence what you want to do on the solution slide. And again, use very powerful statements and don't overcomplicate it. Just really make it simple and down and straight to the point. Then you want to tackle the market size. The market size needs to be really big. I mean, we're talking here about at least 1 billion or more. Because remember that the market is going to potentially limit the returns that the investor is able to capture out of their investment. That's why you can have a great team operating in a really small market, but having a mediocre team in a super big market. They're always going to go for the mediocre team in a super big market. So always go after big markets because ultimately the ceiling, there's no ceiling. The sky is going to be the limit. So try to showcase how big this is. You want to put the market size. You want to put, for example, the compounding annual growth rate so that they see that you're not at the peak, that the project and the market is growing over the course of time. And that's exactly what it's going to get people excited. 
On the competition slide, don't try to hide logos. Maybe you want to put it in a diagram where you're putting yourself at the top right in a very powerful way because that's always where the eye is going to go. But always avoid from not putting some of your competitors because maybe they're going to not make you look so good or maybe you forgot to add some of them. Then people are going to think that either you're hiding something from them or that you have not done your research on the market. So again, always, always, always try to really capture the landscape and put yourself in the top right and then put everyone else scattered all across the board. And perhaps you want to use an X axis and a Y axis where essentially you are talking about your strengths that also play to the weaknesses of your own competitors. Right after you've showcased the competition and people really have an understanding of who are your competitors, you want to really include here the competitive advantage slide. On the competitive advantage slide, you want to list all those competitive advantages, maybe in bullet points with some nice, good looking icons next to it to make it more visually appealing. But here, what you're in essence doing is breaking it down as to why you have an edge over some of those existing players that are already in the market. So this is your chance to really beef up and really follow up on the previous slide on the way that you were differentiating yourself from the Y axis and the X axis. This is just a way to really close it on a really high note so that people really know what separates you from the rest. On the product slide, you want to showcase some like nice things about it. You want to put the product or the service in action. You want to talk about like some of what your customers say that is so great about it. If you're in person, maybe you want to remove this slide. And what you do is you can actually give them the product or show them the product, a demo of it, so that they can see it, they can feel it. It's more tangible rather than just putting it up on the screen. Obviously, if you're not in person, then obviously you got to include it in the deck and you're just going to be sending it across in the deck, but try to put the product or the service in the best light possible in action so that they get an understanding of what it is about. Then it's the target customers. Who are you going after? Who are these people? What are the age brackets? What is the gender? Where do you find them? What are their interests? Uh, maybe there's also some quotes that you can allocate there from some of those uh, uh, customers. But essentially, you really want here to break it down so that the investor gets a clear understanding that you know your customer. I can stress enough how many times I've seen the typical founder that goes into the office of a venture capital firm to see if they can invest in their business and they're just playing on their phones, they're not paying attention. And all of a sudden, when the founder talks about their customer, you would see people putting their phone down, really listening. And that's why really you telling the world, telling those investors that you understand your customer inside and out is critical because at that point they're going to be like, okay, they have done their research. They know who they are serving and that's going to get them really excited to invest in your business. The traction slide is super important. I mean, here, if you are super early stage and you don't know what to include, maybe there's like some other aspects that you can maybe insert. You can even go like week, week by week rather than going month by, by month or year by year. Here you can talk about like number of uh, customers, number of repeating customers, their revenues, something. You got to use a metric that it's going to ultimately define the health of your business. And that's something that is going to tell the investors that there is growth happening. You know, it's funny how in many instances there's investors that you would ask them, how would you define traction? And they don't even know how to define traction. But traction is ultimately a KPI, a metric that is showing evidence that there is clear growth and that the business is heading in the right direction. So there's always something that you can really grab and really include but really you want to show progress, which is what it's all about. Then on the business model slide, just keep it simple. Here you want to showcase how you're making money. I mean, is it a, a subscription on a monthly basis? Is it a one-time purchase? Is it a setup fee? How are you making the money? 
break it down here so that the investor really understands where are those revenues coming from, what are those ways in which you're really monetizing those customers so that they can maybe like model it out on their end and then see and project, you know, like maybe do some numbers back on the envelope kind of thing. But here, just break it down how you're planning or how you are actually now monetizing your customers. Then on the financial slides, I always see founders making the mistake of just grabbing a screenshot from their financial model and just dumping it into the uh, pitch deck. You can actually take a look at the pitch deck template below, which is a template that founders are using all over the world to raise millions and how essentially I've basically put in there as a template a really beautiful way of showing nice graphs that you've extracted from the model that you can place there so that people right away can see and do the analysis on how you are growing different metrics and different numbers. You do not want to just put a screenshot. You need to handhold the investor and the best way to do it is by breaking it down maybe in three or four slides, the financials. And that's essentially one thing that investors are going to appreciate because remember, there are studies that actually have followed pitch sticks, the way that investors invest their time with pitch sticks. On average, they spend about two minutes and 41 seconds, and it is proven that the slide that the investor spends the, mona, the most amount of time on is the one pertaining to the financials. So here you want to nail it. You want to go with your best foot forward, and that's why you don't want to just take a screenshot. You want to really create those beautiful graphs and really model it out for the investors so that they get excited they get excited when they get to understand your numbers and how that money is coming in, how that money is going out, that's going to be essential. Then you're going to go into the other investor slides. Maybe you want to talk in this slide about who else has invested, how much money have you been able to raise, maybe you put some logos of some of those venture funds or private equity firms or whoever invested in your firm that you can include as a way of social proof, meaning some logos it's going to help them understand, hey, there's already some people involved in this business, credible sources, and I maybe know some of them. I should call them up to see what they think about this company, but it always acts as social proof. So this is a slide that you want to keep. Then you're going to go into the team slide. The team slide is your opportunity to really shine and really tell that investor the, why you have the right people in the right seats. Here, maybe you want to throw some logos of companies that your team has worked for. My recommendation is that you just keep it simple. You keep it to the leadership team rather than including all your employees. Because the thing is that you need to be able and you need to be in a position to put your hands on the fire and knowing that every single individual that you're going to be putting in that slide is going to be sticking around at least for the next six months because fundraising is about removing concerns, not adding more concerns. So if you have people that are leaving in the middle of your round and then all of a sudden they're going to be like, where is this person? Oh, that person left. What about this person? Oh, that person left. Then they're going to be like, there's something wrong with this business. I'm not investing. I'm out. So you want to remove those barriers. So with that being said, only include maybe the leadership team, the people that are going to be sticking around and showing there some of the previous experience to really tell the investor that you are obviously having the right people seated on the right uh, seats of the bus and that eventually you're going to find that path towards success. Then you want to talk about the amount that you're raising. So here you can talk about a range. Maybe you can throw about from X to Y rather than just like throwing the specific amount because this way you're making the net a little bit wider rather than just going by to let's say if you're raising 2 million to the people that are investing 2 million and down. Here if you were to say between 2 to 4 million, you're, in, you're capturing every single one in between. So you're making a little bit broad. Uh, this is a good way to really cast a, a, a wider net uh, and be able to get more people and more meetings and more conversations going. Then you're going to have the use of funds slide. In the use of funds slide, essentially what the investor wants is to get an understanding of where you are planning to deploy the capital. I mean, typically here what we're looking at is marketing, development, it could be recruiting, it could be office. 
it's just the typical ones that you would see. I would probably not recommend going too much into detail as to what percentage you're going to be allocating of that money because the investor may disagree with you. So just keep it high level uh, and basically you're going to be making that be part of the conversation with the investor to really get a line as to where perhaps the money and how much should be spent on each one of those categories. Obviously your model, your financial model is going to contain that level of detail, but I think that here again, just keep it high level. Then you can include perhaps the roadmap slide or the milestone slide. Here, what you're talking about is maybe like the product, what you're doing about it, perhaps certain milestones that you're going to be accomplishing over the course of whatever amount of time, maybe Q1 of this year or Q2 of that year, but really providing that roadmap, that path of how you're thinking about the execution, perhaps for the next 18 to 24 months. This is going to give them assurance and really understand, and the investor is going to be able to understand that you have a clear journey that you've already outlined to really follow and to really make things happen. Then is the closing slide. On the closing slide is just the thank you, the contact information, maybe like a picture of the team smiling, posing so that they get that personalized level. And I think that that's going to come across in a way in which they're going to see that there's actual human beings behind this business. So with that being said, I would love to hear in the comment section what you're up to. Make sure that you hit a like on this video and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on all the videos that we're rolling out every week. And then also if you're raising capital and you need any help, feel free to shoot me a note at alejandro at pantheraadvisors.com. Thank you so much for watching.